Hi everybody, good evening. Sorry I haven't been on YouTube for a while. Very busy, things get in the way. Uh, tonight what I had to do, well what I did was I made myself a pressure checker to check for leaks on the motor. It's already set up. Couldn't do a real video on it because there were so many parts I had to do. But what's involved to do this is this right over here. You have basic parametric, ah, whatever, you know, pressure for your arm. Okay. And what I happen to have done, right, I did this over here. There's my motor. There's the motor. Let's not talk about that. Um, happens to be an inner two tire that I cut to put there. Okay, I had to make a plate that goes over here using the inner tube as a gasket because you cannot use a regular gasket with this because it's porous. This is not porous. Okay, then I had to make a rear block plate in the back for the exhaust. If you're doing this on an actual car, you can just plug up the exhaust at the end. Right, and you can even check the leak at the back gasket at the same time. Uh, the reason I made this is because I have another motor that's leaking. It's a reed motor. and Rather than starting it, I could probably figure out what the problem is. Okay, so you would have to do... When this comes out of the box, there's two lines. One goes into the, uh, a big pouch, and the other comes back over. Okay, so now I have a, a meter right, for pressure. Okay, I'll show you how that's going to work. This is the pump on this side. It's going to go around. Bought some T connectors. I have some T connectors. I'm going to do a T connector over here. So the air is going to go through here, pass on this side over here, into the inner tube. This side I knotted off, folded it a couple of times. Then I used a separate piece of rubber and cut and slit and put it in so they could take a lot more pressure. Then unfortunately I had to use one of my gas can, gas cap, gas tanks, ends. Had to put like a tape inside here, fold it over a couple of times, a couple of wire ties. And once I had it all pumped up, uh, this was leaking, I fixed that problem. Standard fuel line over here. So let me just show you what this thing's gonna do. And I did squirt it, you know, squirt the car. This particular motor I did. It's a motor I had laying around. There you go, let's put this here. So what you're gonna to wanna to do, I'll put this in the background so you see that move. Okay. When this begins to pump up, I'm gonna lock the valve over here, close the valve over here, right? And I'll pump it up, right? This will swell. When I get someone like 260 to 280. Now the little movement you see there, okay, that little movement you see there is the ring. Okay, because if you turn this motor around and you want to check the air inside it, see it'll move. That's the compression of the ring. It's gonna bypass it. So give a little more, more pressure. And this is going to be normal because this motor is sealed. See, all sealed up. That's going to be normal. It's just going to run down bit by bit. And all you have to do is once you are uh, checking for leaks, I mean, you could check your tools, see if there's any leaks there. You know, you could check the engine itself. See, no leaks. I even had to solder this over here. These are fuel lines for uh, nitro cars. That's the little party number that I used. Right there. Okay. Then what I did, this is this one particularly is for the regular two-stroke, you know, gasoline engine. This is like a 23. I opened it up, it's fantastic. See, you can see on top my plug is loose. You see what happens up here? Oh, 
right there on top. And nowhere else is this motor leaking. So probably if I just, you know, take this out, retighten it, you know. But right there, that's going to be a problem if you're leaking out uh, any compression from the motor. So on this motor, maybe this head's worn. I don't know. It's a used motor. A friend of mine gave it to me. And this is first time I'm seeing it fuzz up. So it, it's probably just loose. You know, that's. I just think that's all it is. Yeah, it has to be a loose plug. Let me see. Maybe we should do is uh, yeah, it's, it's loose. So we give it another squirt. Pump it back up. There we are. Okay, just a little wet now. It's dropping a little bit. That's just the ring. And if you look around here, let's see if I get a better shot. I don't see any leaks. Any leaks at all on this little puppy. So that was the project for tonight. And it should hold pressure after a while. When it settles, it should hold. Holding about 160. Now the plug's tight, so I'm gonna assume maybe that's the correct number. About 160, 145, 160, about 150, but it's pretty good. And then also when I just wanna take the air out, start over again, just open it up. Take it, pump it up again. Put it about 280. Then you can do is let it settle. And check the rings on the piston, just turn it. And the direction rotates. It should bump up once in a while. That tells you that it's, it's compressing correctly. When the car is running and gets hot, then that seal becomes completely tight. So that's what you're gonna normally expect. But uh, it should settle down 150, 160 when it comes to that. Because uh, the other cars, uh, especially the one I have, I gotta do the compression check in that. Then what I also did, as I made one for a reed block, I did this one already. This is from the other motor, not from uh, the dragster. Just to get this one set up. So I'll be able to do the reeds and the standard block. You could also put this adapter on with the uh, isolator block and just go straight through that we could check the back of the isolator block I didn't have one so I just put these two short ones this is just fine for this test okay but this goes directly to the motor so this is actually when the pistons on the top it checks crankcase when the pistons all the way down you're blowing it through you should be able to move the air up and down so that meter on here should go positive and negative negative. and here's where it's settling now let's see go back this way Oop. It's holding air basically. It's real. It's it's holding. So as long as it's holding, then that means the motor is good. So anyway, um, if you like things like this, this is little, I guess, little tricks that I do, and you know, looked up on eBay for different parts. That's what this came from. Okay, this was I won this for like twelve dollars. <coughs> okay, metal I had in the house, screws I had in the house, T connectors I had to buy. Okay, put that together. And I'm using the original hose, the only different hose. See, this will fit directly in, because that's normal. The T-connector, that's gonna be normal, fit the right size. Didn't have to take this out over here at all. Still got a couple of T-connectors and left over and just use the standard line going back in. And I just used the end cap, again, for my gas tank, which I'm not gonna be using. I put something else in it. But uh, I hope you like it. At least something to see, something to do. So if uh, you're building a motor and you got it all set up, 
if you want to do a compression check, this is one way. Another way, you could probably put a bicycle pump directly into here, but then you won't be able to tell what's happening to it. This is a really good tool for it. You know, it was worth the money. And if I ever take it apart, I could check my blood pressure. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the quick little video. Uh, have a good night. And to everybody in Brooklyn, see you at the line. Enjoy the day. God bless all.